All right, folks, another week. That means it's another what the F happened. Well, there's a lot happening. Bitcoin hitting all-time highs. We got job reports coming out. We got Powell reinforcing the Fed's position that the Fed is not ready to start cutting interest rates. We had the market fall over 400 points yesterday. Today, it's up a little bit, trying to regain some of that. We'll see what happens. We got a little bit of politics going on. Nikki Haley basically coming and going public saying she is not going to continue her presidential campaign. So that means Trump is in. So there's a lot to talk about today, a lot to rant about and a lot to rave about. So we're going to get into that in just a second. But before we do that, let me play our little video. All right, we are back for another What the F Happened. Always excited to do this because this is one of those shows that we can just say whatever we want as long as we rant, rant, rave, and argue about what's in the news. And right here, headline news, Nikki Haley to end the presidential campaign seeding GOP nominations to Trump. Stephen, I see you have your hat on today. Make money great again. So uh, let's hear what you have to say about that. You know, might as well kick this one off with a bang. We'll get some people coming in. We got Chance coming in from TikTok saying Trump 2024. So we're off to a good start here. What do you, what do you got? Yeah, man. I just figured, you know, it looks like Trump's going to be the nominee officially. He's got all the delegates. He's winning all these primaries. Um, Haley was the last, uh, you know, front runner against him, I guess you could sort of say. So it looks like he's going to take home the Republican nomination. And I'm not going to be here next week, so we got St. Patrick's Day coming up, so I'm not going to get to rock all the uh, all the Irish green and everything next week, so just figure it's the perfect hat for today. You know, we got Trump in, make money great again. We just wrapped up our last three-day Money School Essentials training over this past weekend. It was a hit. I mean, I, I don't know, Chris, if you agree, and I say this every time, but somehow these things keep getting better and better. If anybody was on this weekend, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Did you think it was the best one yet? Or if it was your first one, what'd you think of it? I uh, would love to hear that. So just feeling good, man. Making money great again. St. Patrick's Day, spring break next week. And then uh, the Money Tank event we have for Private Money Club in Salt Lake City, Utah at the end of April. Uh, we're real close to selling out tickets on that. So in honor of that, I wore the uh, Money Tank, Be Your Own Bank. Just Let me just show this shirt off one time. That's <laughs> an epic shirt. Look at this thing, you know? Uh, so just a, just a super cool shirt. So feeling good today, ready to rock and roll, ready to have some fun. And I know we got some awesome training set up for 1 PM on the wealth webinar. Also. Fantastic. All right. So we got a whole bunch of people coming in today. TikTok is on fire, man. This is the most people that I've seen on TikTok in a while. We've been heavily suppressed by TikTok. Uh, for uh, talking about the dude in ways that uh, TikTok didn't like. So we actually got banned a few times and uh, they suppressed us and it looks like we're getting it back. And then we got Instagram always hot and heavy. And, you know, what would we do without YouTube? YouTube coming in strong. We got Eve, Deborah, Lynn. We got a bunch of people. RNT Express, good morning to you all. Well, let's uh, let's kick off with, uh, let's talk about Bitcoin, Stephen. I mean, everybody seems to be ranting and raving about Bitcoin, except for The Economist. And uh, I've got one article that just came out March 6th. This is a white paper from an economist talking about Bitcoin. And, and this particular economist isn't for or against Bitcoin. Actually, they see a future for Bitcoin in a big way. They know the problem it solves. However... They said one man's trash. That's the name of this. Bitcoin made new highs this week, topping 69,000. It could be higher than 75,000 by now or lower than 60,000. I have no idea what it's worth. So the whole article is on that baseline. It's, it's the same thing that you heard. You heard uh, Berkshire Hathaway at their meetings. You heard uh, Warren Buffett talking about what is the value of Bitcoin? How do you value Bitcoin, you know, or any of the, the different cryptos. Like, how do you put a value on something that has no value, that has no real worth outside of what somebody's willing 
to pay for it. And I think that's the whole interesting piece of this where they're talking about Bitcoin. Now, it is nearing the next halving. And, and I did a YouTube video about this. I am not a Bitcoin expert, but I've read the book Inventing Bitcoin. So I felt like I could at least do some due diligence and some research. And I did that. But, you know, Bitcoin's off and running, but it is pulling back. It tested the highs, it broke the old highs, and now it's kind of pulling back, which is pretty typical. You know, when the stock market pulls back, which yesterday the market pulled back 400 plus points, it's it's very, they're, they're correlated, folks. Bitcoin and the markets have been very correlated. A little less recently since the ETFs, the Bitcoin ETFs have launched, it's kind of been a bit wonky, but you can see from the chart right there that it, it did yesterday pull back. Stephen, what is that chart you just had up there a second ago? Well, it's just showing, you know, the Dow Jones. We kind of had, um, you know, pretty big sell-off yesterday. It's rebounding a little bit today. It's kind of holding level. I mean, when you compare that to Bitcoin, um, same thing. It had, big, it had a big boom last week, kind of leveled off like the markets, and then fell yesterday right along with the markets. And now having a, a rebound today a little bit, just like the markets. But I mean, so, it still the- correlates. I mean, we've been talking about that. For years, you know, the argument for Bitcoin is the anti-market, anti-dollar, anti, you know, all that. But it, it just it correlates perfectly. So you tell me. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the interesting thing that you must realize is everybody's saying Bitcoin is going to go to the moon. But, you know, on what basis? On the basis of speculation, on the basis of excitement and optimism that's the only basis that will push bitcoin higher right now now there is one little thing that's kind of baked into this whole thing and we don't know whether or not this is going to make a big deal but it should i mean if you read or understand bitcoin there's a finite amount of it okay it has to be mined which to mine bitcoin requires energy and high cost of energy but what it's going to have and and that's uh what's coming up next is bitcoin is going to be hitting its halving point uh, and I'm probably saying that wrong because it's not half, but it's halving or halving. <laughs> that's right. I don't know. H-A-L-V-I-N-G. Um, and that's where mining will produce half of the current Bitcoin per transaction, essentially making each Bitcoin worth twice as much or twice as much of what? Twice as much of what people are willing to pay for it. Study intrinsic value. There is no intrinsic value in any cryptos. But but the one thing that you got to look at with Bitcoin is it does solve a problem. It's just a matter of whether or not that problem that it solves is going to create a value that is what everybody says. And I think in the future, definitely. I just think we've got a lot of rough roads ahead. And I think a lot of people that are plowing into Bitcoin right now at these these levels, at the high levels, they're buying high. And I talk about this all the time. You make money in investing by buying low and selling high. I'm not an expert with this, but how I trade Bitcoin, I buy it every single week. Okay. I automatic just every week. I buy Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then when it gets to these levels, you know what I do? I go in and I hit sell. And I've done this consistently and persistently. I buy it dollar cost averaging. And then when it gets to a certain level, I look at my profit. If it's where I want it to be, I sell it. People think I'm crazy, but then all of a sudden Bitcoin comes back down and it gives me more buying opportunity. Now, the reason I do that is because I, like this economist, can't wrap my head around what should Bitcoin be valued at? Because it's very difficult. It's not like stocks, which are all overvalued right now. I mean, every freaking stock that there is, is overvalued right now. Fundamentally, uh, you know, Warren Buffett would tell you about that. This economist talks about that. Yeah, yeah I mean, one- with Chris, just to expand on that just a little bit. Like with stocks, what a stock is, is it's 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 ownership in a company. So you can take a company and you can look at profit and loss. You can look at um, vol, you know, um, it, it's, it's worth, you know, assets and, and everything that's involved with a company. And so you can literally measure that and come up with a value of what each one of those ownership pieces, stocks is worth. And that's, you know, while people do fundamental and technical analysis and and value companies. And right now, what these stocks are worth compared to these companies is so over, it's probably more overinflated than ever in history, right? Uh, Um, Yeah, 100%. The multiples that are used right now. So it's mind blowing to see that where with Bitcoin, there's no company backing it. There's, There's nothing there. It's just like you're saying. So go ahead. Well, no, I mean, I think that's the, that's the baseline. Listen, I'm all about Bitcoin. 
because it is decentralized, but is it really deconnected, you know, or, or unconnected from everything else? Because it's not. It's totally correlated with the stock market. So if we can all agree that in the future, the stock market is going to be lower than it is today, which I can't see, how can it be higher? Like what in the, what, what is there out there that could push the markets higher than they are now? I mean, I've talked about this forever. And then what's happened? The markets have pushed higher. Why? Speculation, 100% speculation and government uh, and the Fed's interactions with it. But the Fed, I mean, right here, Powell reinforces the position. They're not ready to start cutting rates because inflation is still too high. So, so right there, if they're not willing to cut rates and then, and they're going to continue their, their unwinding of the balance sheet to some extent, like they're not going to step in and, and print more money to stimulate the economy. They're trying to slow the economy down. That's, that's been what they're, so what's going to push the markets higher? which also then could be then translated over to what's going to push Bitcoin higher outside of pure speculation. And I'll leave you with the Bitcoin thing and then I'll take some comments and we'll read what some people have to say because I'll tell you on TikTok, YouTube, there are some folks on here that are way smarter than I am when it comes to Bitcoin. Mark well, Moss, Mark Moss is one of them. If you follow his YouTube channel, like he talks about Bitcoin a lot. He knows a lot more than I do. Go ahead, Stephen. No, I just, it, it comes to a question where, you know, are you almost too smart to understand Bitcoin? Because you're you're trying to use investment intelligence and apply it to something that's just immeasurable in that way. So it's almost like you have to have that, I don't want to say dumbed down or, or not understanding of investments, but you have to have a different, I guess, mindset on what that is. And it's an interesting conversation because a lot of what we do with becoming your own bank, the infinite banking concept. Um, you know, the specially designed whole life. It's a, it's a changed in mindset on how money flows, where your money goes and how money moves through the, the quote unquote system. And to understand infinite banking, you really have to change your mindset completely around. And I almost feel like Bitcoin makes that happen. And like you and I just haven't been able to make that mindset shift yet because we're so ingrained in the, 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 to me, the proper way to look at investment. So it's just, it's just a very interesting topic to me. It's a fascinating topic. And, um, you know, I was just showing, hang on one sec. Gotta get my juice plugged in. I was just showing uh TikTok, uh, Mr. Cash, lazy cash here, which all of you on YouTube can see, but TikTok and Instagram cannot. And it's kind of like, you know, cash, like he doesn't give a crap whether Bitcoin goes up or down. And, and I think I'm there with it. And, and I think a lot of people, you know, are, are saying the same thing. And I'm going to leave you with this. This economist said, I'm drawn to Bitcoin by its simplicity, but I keep my distance because the same thing that drove it to its dizzying heights four years ago could happen again. Bitcoin is worth what people think it's worth. No less, no more. And the, the other thing that I think everybody needs to realize is that I think there's a strong probability that Bitcoin will probably see the $20,000 range before it sees the $100,000 range in the near future. Now, in the, in the long future, I think Bitcoin will be well into the hundreds. So as a long-term investment, I think it would be a safe bet. But you are going to go through carnage during that period of time. That thing's going to go all over the place. It's a very volatile, very volatile. I mean, look at it. Every day it's volatile and it trades 24-7. So I don't know if you like uh, beating yourself up and watching it. Great. If you're the long-term investor and you just buy it and you hold it, great. Uh, to each their own. For me, I'll just continue dollar cost averaging in every week. And then when it gets to these kind of levels, man, I click the sell button and I am like, woohoo, beer's on me. And that's my take on Bitcoin. So we got uh, Wes said over here on TikTok. He said, "Have a very close friend or a very close friend that oops, sorry, it's going pretty quick here. Very close friend in the markets. He says the market shares are a lie. <laughs> you don't say. I think most everything you're seeing in the stock market today is pretty much a lie. I mean, it's a, a completely speculative market. One very much like what we saw back in the late '90s and the early 2000s, right before the dot com crash happened. When you look at crypto, you can directly correlate it back to a lot of the things that happened during the dot com era, uh, and that's just what it is. So, well said, Wes. Well said. Yeah, what other yeah can I add to that, Chris? Yeah. So, just as an example, I mean, we agree with you. Like, I'm not saying the stock market's better than Bitcoin in any way. We just spent three full days, six, six and a half, almost seven hours each day uh, this past weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, talking 100% about money and investing and opportunities. 
And do you know how much of that consisted in investing in the stock market? Zero, none of it. Why? Because Chris and I, and we, we do not believe right now is maybe the best time in the world to be in the stock market. Why? It's breaking, like we've just been talking about, it's breaking all time highs for no reason, for, for no good reason. I mean, inflation is still running away. Like we'll talk about in a second, uh, what uh, Jerome Powell just came out with reinforcing they're not ready to cool, like um, to, 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 to cool things off. And so, or they need to continue cooling things off. Uh, you know, this new ADP, this new jobs report just came out below. Like, so, so that's not what we're saying at all. We're saying there's alternatives out there that, that might be worth exploring. And that's what we spent three entire days uh, talking about this weekend. Yeah, no, Justin uh, came in from YouTube. He said Shibu or Shiba or whatever they call that one. And, and that was a really popular one back. Now, now my cat's airing his balls out. I mean, come on now. You know, have some decency cash. Anyway, we're just going to let him do that. Uh, but he said uh, Shiba was up. I don't know, Shiba the cat food place or are we talking Shibu Inu or whatever that is? <laughs> anyway, but it was up uh, to a, It was. let's see was up to a couple days ago and finally made a profit. So Justin finally made a profit on that. Probably took a long time to do it, but I would say you probably want to exit that one. Uh, just safe. Now, also, if you're not following Justin on Instagram, he's building a really sick race car right now. You should check that out. Shameless plug to, to Justin. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, let's see what else do we got on this topic of Bitcoin. Some people say that we don't even own our own stocks anymore. Yeah. You know, it, it, I started diving into a book that Mark Perry uh, talked about, uh, The Great Taking. And after I started reading that book, I'm not all the way through it, but after I started reading it, so many things started to become very crystal clear in a bad way. Uh, my old neighbor got a hold of me, and folks, it, you, you guys can maybe relate or not, but he got a hold of me last night and he was complaining that his taxes on or his assessed value, which is basically what derives his taxes. And in New York, here we get taxes. We get taxed to death, but his house, when he bought it, he bought it in the $500,000 range just a few short years ago. And he got his assessed value. And what do you, Stephen, what do you think they assessed his house at? He bought it for just a smidgen, about 550 something, uh, I think three or four years ago. And now what do you think it's worth? We are talking about Buffalo, New York here. A million? $900,000. So do you know what that does to his taxes? It almost like it increases them by like 30, 40%. Yeah. So when, when he called me, he was freaking. He's like, what do I do? I, this is not right. I said, I know it's not right. It's because the houses behind you are mansions. So they're pulling those in. They're valuing your house at $300 a square foot. I mean, that's just insanity. You need to hire somebody to fight this for you because that's going on. But let's just think about property taxes for a second. And, and going back to that book, you know, because property taxes, if you don't pay them, what happens? They take your house. Very simple. Kind of like if you don't pay your water bill, like they put a lien on your house. Like if you don't pay your property taxes, they take your house. Who's in control, folks? Who's in control of your stocks? Who's in control of your house? If you, even if you own your house, if you don't pay your taxes, you don't own your house. You could have a $10 million house and then you don't pay your taxes and your house can be foreclosed on. Really makes you start to think about things. And that's just one example. Uh, let's see, what else do we got going on? We got any other good comments coming in? I know we had one about uh, the three day came in. Let's see. I'm just looking on Instagram and TikTok. Nothing there. Before we move on to Mr. Jerome Powell. I'm just reading through some of the notes. Here we go. Uh, Jesus said, Bitcoin is a scam. Another bubble prone to cyber attacks. My friend just had his account hacked and all of his Bitcoin is gone. You know, I've heard that several times. Steve, you remember that story out in California when we were at Secret Knock about that guy? He had like a stupid amount. I, I can't even remember. It was like billions of dollars. And, uh, you know, we, we say that it's decentralized and everything else. And Stephen, I'm not going to get the story right, but it was something to the extent of because the amount and because of some things that were being done, he was trying to take ownership of this Bitcoin. The government got involved and literally hacked his Bitcoin account and froze it. The government. So if it's decentralized and it's so safe, how can the government hack it? I mean, just like Jesus just said, like, how can somebody hack into your Bitcoin account and, and steal your Bitcoin? Like, is it really as safe as we think? I don't know. I, I, I don't have answers. I'm just posing questions here, folks. I'm not the expert. Yeah, I don't know. 
And then Morgan came in. This is a really unique question. I want to hit this because I talk about this all the time. He said, uh, is there any way to know who is buying treasury bonds, U United States treasury bonds? I am concerned that they are being bought by our enemies. Same with land in the U.S. Yeah, well, that's clearly being done, uh, being sold to our enemies. Many states are making laws against it. Yep. So Morgan, like who's buying treasury bonds? I'm not sure if you can really, you'd have to Google that one, but I think Google's going to probably throttle what answer they get anyway. I don't know who's buying it, but probably the wrong people. Absolutely. I would guess. I mean, remember back a while ago, China was buying a lot of ours. Uh, Japan's the number one buyer of uh, treasury bonds, but uh, you see they're bonds. So a bond doesn't really give the other person any equity ownership in it. So the United States of America is an entity, right? We all know it's a corporation. If you were to buy stock in the United States of America, which you can't, but if you were, you'd have equity in the United States of America. But what US treasury bonds are or treasury bills, they're, they're bonds, they're IOU. So there is no ownership or control, so to say, with the bonds. So by having our enemies buy treasury bonds, I don't really know where that would jeopardize anything. But yeah, it's 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 a good point to make. It is. Let's see. Well, so hey, Jesus said earnings are high, and that's the reason stocks are high. Completely disagree. Completely disagree. Earnings are high, but if you're paying attention to future outlooks for almost every company, maybe not Nvidia, but almost every company out there, future outlooks are 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 far less significantly less, which basically is, is a leading indicator to tell you that things are slowing down in the future. Now, earnings might be up now because those are lagging indicators. You're looking at earnings from past, which yes, we all know that things were good in the past, but when we're really looking at where we're going, I mean, we don't drive our car looking in the rear view mirror, do we? So Jesus, when you're really looking at stocks, stop looking at the past performance, stop looking at where they were, stop looking at what they did. That's a good barometer to kind of see where they might go, but look at leading indicators, look at economic cycles, look at economic factors as to where we're going in the future. And, and I'll tell you, all leading indicators point down. So although earnings are driving stocks higher, which was your point, agree with that, but it doesn't mean that they're going to be higher in the future. Matter of fact, I can bet most stocks will report lower earnings in the future. No ifs, ands, or buts about that one. So you got to be really careful at the market because the name of the game in buying stock is not to buy high, it's to buy low. And if anyone's buying in right now, plowing money into their 401k, into those Freedom 2045 funds, 2030, 2050, whatever you're putting your money in, like you're buying probably at some of the highest prices. Well, actually not some, arguably the highest prices that all those stocks or mutual funds have ever been at. I mean, that's a scary thought. It's a really scary thought. Uh, I certainly wouldn't want to buy something knowing that in the future it's going to be worth a lot less. Now we do with cars, but that's because the use case for a car, we need it. That's how we get point A to point B. So we know a car is going to depreciate, but we enjoy the drive and we, we need that. It's a necessity almost nowadays. It's not technically a necessity, but it sort of is for most of us. We need a car to get to work and to drive our kids and all those things. So we accept the fact that the car we buy is being bought at a higher price in most cases than we'll sell it for in the future. But that doesn't have to be the case with your investments, your retirement, your 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 you know financial future. So just point you know, throwing caution to the wind, not trying to be a doomsdayer here. Definitely not that. I'm actually a very optimistic son of a bitch. But when I hear you know Jerome Powell coming on uh, yeah, let's but, switch gears. But, Go ahead, Stephen. But, but I mean, headline news on Yahoo, stock surge to record highs doesn't mean we're in a bubble. And it goes on to try and say why stocks are still going to make a run. So you can't blame people for. No, I get it. You know, not really understanding when like, you know, this is like just straight in their face. Hey, everything's great. You know, it's crazy. I, I don't know how to get away with this. Well, I mean, listen, Stephen and, and everybody else listening, I mean, this is nothing new. Every other period of time right before recession, the same damn things happened. I mean, go back to 1929, go back to the late 1990s, early 2000s, go back to 2006 and seven. I mean, like just study. I mean, that's where studying the past really gives you a really good relative understanding of where we're going. But, but here's the scary thing. Not even scary. Just here's the, the reality of the situation is we don't, you can't time the market. Nobody, not the best, not Ray Dalio. Nobody can time the market. 
Ray Dalio probably would tell all of you right to your face, I can't believe the market's as high as it is and has been this high for this long. I, I guarantee he would say that because it just doesn't make any bloody sense. But it doesn't need to make sense because it's completely speculation and it's human emotion. And, and we're in that overconfidence part of human emotion. People are overconfident because solely a lot of the investors out there have never felt the impact of a recession, truly. I mean, unless you considered the pandemic's, you know, fall of recession, which technically it was, but then they said, oh, we just changed the definition. So it, it, most investors, you know, anyone, I think it's 38 years old or younger have never felt the impact of a recession. So Stephen, like when you talk about the human emotion of being overly confident right now with the markets, it's because they don't know the downside. They truly have never lived it, felt it, or even understood what it means for a market to go down. Think about it. this is the longest bull run in history. Like unless they were of age to own a business or being in the working force or get laid off during the last great recession, nobody knows. Nobody has any understanding, you know, in that genre or, or any of those uh, those genres of what it means for a market to actually fall apart and hit a recession. It's crazy. It's crazy. It is speculation and manipulation at its finest hour. And everybody has to make a choice. Are you okay with that risk or are you not? And each, each answer is right to each their own. Me and most of the people that I talk to, definitely not okay with the risk. The, the juice is not worth the squeeze. Does that make sense? The risk it does, is not warranting the return right now. Not in the slightest, not in any way, shape, or form. The risk far outweighs any return I think you can get in the stock market right now. And you know what? The cool part about this is a year from now, a bunch of you will be like, Chris, you were wrong. And I'll be like, yep, I was wrong. But I'd still made money. And that's the beauty of the whole thing. You see, I know how to make money without taking the risk of the market. I don't have to take the train down the path of the traditional investor. I've learned more than that. I know how to get off of the path, take the path least followed, and how to make a lot of money without any of the risk that investors are taking. But you know, we're not the norm, Steve. Steven, I mean, it's just, we're just not the norm. Yeah. Now, what, do you, what do you want to, before we get to Powell, I know we're going on a rant and we're getting some really good comments coming in well, here. A good comment coming in from Utah, uh, YouTube. I find this an interesting discussion, you know, bring back salt exceptions. Um, you know, salt is, is what state, state and local tax yeah. where it allows you, if you're paying state taxes to, I think up to 10,000, they might be trying to raise it um, to write that off on your federal income tax bill. It, it's an interesting one because in florida we don't have state tax because the state is ran pretty well and 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 so you know we're able to do other things and so to me it's like i don't get a deduction so just because you live in a high tax state that can't run itself because of whatever reason you know why are you getting a a, a better federal deduction than i am and so that one, you know, I understand it, but if you look at taxes in general, we're taxed on top of tax, on top of tax, on top of tax in everything that we do, um, you know, in daily life. So, you know, if you want to talk about, you know, stopping paying taxes on top of taxes, you know, let's get a lot deeper into that conversation. But I know that's an interesting one. I mean, you live in New York, so you probably really want these big salt deductions, but I, I just thought it's an interesting comment. I think that's a really interesting comment. Uh, we got someone coming in from TikTok. Uh, Cody Reynolds uh, said, everything will go crypto blockchain payment. 100%. 100% agree. But that's not the conversation. The conversation is Bitcoin and is it going to go to the moon? 100% um, agree. Everything in the future will go blockchain. I, I truly believe that uh, in one shape or, or the other. And then uh, Morgan uh, was talking about treasuries. But Michael said a, a pretty interesting thing. Um, and you can use your imagination to, to understand who Michael's talking about uh, coming in from Facebook. He said they want to make the economy look good so the dude or the dud gets reelected. Totally agree. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, I said manipulation at, at its finest hour, however you want to look at that. And, and also, too, to um, Morgan's question, Daniel Gonzalez and TikTok actually probably nailed the, and I can't believe I didn't, answer it this way, but he probably nailed it. Who, who's the biggest bar, buyer of treasury bonds? Well, of course, the Fed 
the Fed. The Federal Reserve is the biggest buyer of treasury bonds, always probably has been. Um, great job, Daniel. You, you're spot on. I, I can't think of anyone else that buys more treasury bonds than the Fed itself. Uh, on the balance sheet, I don't know exactly where it is, but I think we're probably a little over $8 trillion in treasury bonds and mortgage-backed securities owned by the Fed. So who's the largest buyer? Well, the Fed. Uh, but it's it's all all interconnected. So we're not going to go down that rabbit hole. Uh, let's see. Amazon stock's going to split. Just seeing what else problem. If we stop buying corporate products, Kellogg's, but we, you know, just that you see Amazon going to split. Second Amendment. Anyway. All right. These are great comments coming in. So keep them coming in, folks. Uh, Daniel Gonzalez said that makes no sense though. Buying back their own dollar debt notes they issue. It makes perfect sense actually, Daniel, because their job is to control monetary policy and that's how they do it. Buying bonds, uh, you know, reverse repos and things of that nature. That's, that's how they can control or, or play puppeteer with the economy and with the markets. I mean, there's no secret with modern monetary theory, we're, we're no longer using Austrian economics. I mean, we don't even use Keynes, Keynesians. I always say that wrong. Keynesian economics. We're on modern monetary theory which essentially means they're going to print to try to keep this bubble going as long as they can. And too much of it is tied to all the wrong reasons as to why they do that. But let's move on because we could spend all day just talking about that. We could also spend you know, some time talking about Foot Locker and their shares plunging more than 20% when they post the holiday loss. I mean, come on, like, how can that be? I mean, people aren't buying Jordans anymore. Steven, how many pair of Nikes you got? <laughs> Dude, come on, speed that shit up. Buy some more Nikes. Their, their shares are plunging. And, and are you, well, Nike, but you're buying them from Nike. Buy them from Foot Locker, man. I remember that first magic moment when I was a child and my mom took me to Foot Locker in the Lockport Mall and I got myself a pair of all white Air Jordans with the air cushion. Man, that would have been in the uh, probably the 80s. That would have been late 80s. I'll never forget that moment. It was magic. I don't know. You got to start pumping up uh, Foot Locker. But here we go. Well, let's go to Jerome Powell here real quick, Stephen. I know we both have a lot to say about this. But in prepared mar remarks for appearances on Capitol Hill, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said policymakers remain attentive to the risks. I don't even glasses, no glasses, to the risks that inflation poses and don't want to ease up too quickly. In other words, ha. We, we got you guys. We fooled your asses. You thought we were going to drop rates real soon. Well, we're not. Gotcha. Anyway, Wall Street didn't like that yesterday at all. But uh, it'll be interesting to see what else comes out. Uh, Powell noted again that lowering rates too quickly risks losing the battle against inflation and likely having to raise rates further. Whoa. Like right out of the horse's mouth likely having to raise rates further. Ain't nobody wanting that. Nope. Nope. Uh, so, you know, it's just, if they go too fast with D so if they listen to the crying baby, which is always the analogy I give in the fed has traditionally hated like letting the baby just cry through and, and most parents, you know what that's like, right? Your baby's crying and crying and crying. Like you just want to go in there and sue them. But the best thing you could probably do is just let them cry it out because that's, that's just natural. But the fed has been really, really, well, they've been accused a lot. They've been really bad at going in and tending to the crying baby. Who's the crying baby? Wall Street. And who else is the crying baby these days? Well, the assholes that are sitting over there in Washington, D.C. You hear them all the time. Who are some of the names of uh, some of those idiots over there that always complain? Remember, they sent a letter to the Fed when the Fed was increasing rates, like, oh my God, slow, <laughs> stop. Who, what was it? Warren? Uh, what's her name? Elizabeth Warren. Yeah, and, Elizabeth uh, Warren. Yeah. Okay, like, I'm she's sure. the crying baby. Yeah. So, anyway, but here's, now here's, the, here's, here's what's wild, man. If, if you switch over to Yahoo News, um, I still look at that. Look that. at that headline Powell, rate cuts likely at some point this year. The yeah. Fed plans to tell interest rate cuts are likely in 2024. So, it's like, what? <laughs> Oh, which, what's it going to be there? What's it going to be? I guess it's, yeah, we, see, yeah, we might have rate hikes and uh, Yahoo. Oh no, we're, we're definitely having rate cuts this year. 
Yeah, so actually, Daniel made a good comment. Even Alan Greenspan, and we all should remember that name, said that the laws don't apply to the Federal Reserve. He is spot on. The laws don't apply to the Federal Reserve. They also don't apply to our number one stock picker in the world. Who is it? Who's the number one stock picker in the world? Because the laws don't apply to her. Nancy Pelosi! Yes! So the laws don't apply to Nancy Pelosi and her little band of uh, elves or whatever you want to call them. Billionaires selling large position. Oh yeah, that's an interesting one. Uh, you know, if any of you really want to get the inside scoop of what's going on, you know, I know what you posted, Stephen, is the news saying, oh, everything's going up. You know, the market could go higher and, you know, all this good stuff. But like, why don't you look at the, the billionaires of the world? Look at what they're doing. You can, you can look at that up. It's insider trading. And you will find that billionaires are selling large positions, huge positions. So what does that tell you? Do you think they know something that we don't know? I would be I would be very safe to say yes, but they're also not playing the timing game. They're not trying to time the market. They're just like, you know what? I'm going to take all my gains off the table and I'm going to sit here in these nice T-bills paying me 5%. I'm going to ride that son of a pup out while Jerome Powell figures out whether he's going to raise rates or drop rates. Right now, rates are great. I'm getting paid good. I'm going to sit on the sidelines. And you know who else did that? Kennedy. Back in 1929, the shoe shine boy story. Yep, he got out of the market and did what? Made a fortune. Man, sometimes it's just just follow the money, folks. Not very hard. Just follow the money. And I love that Cotty uh, Reynolds said that on TikTok. It's, it's all you need to do. Jeff Bezos, two billion in shares. They can't time because the amount of shares sold. Right. So billionaires, it, it takes some time to unload. What else we got, Stephen? What else? Well, we got? I, I will give Nancy Pelosi credit. You know, she came out in the last couple of weeks and said, "You know what? I've had a good run. I'm 83 years old, I believe. She's 83 years old now." She said, "You know, so I, I realize I'm at the end here and ready to pass this on to the next, you know, generation." So she's gonna be stepping down at the end of her term coming up. Um, Mitch McConnell, the leader of the House, uh, also came out. Um, She's not the leader of the House, the leader of the Senate minority also came out and uh, McConnell said, you know, I'm 81, 82 years old now. I'll be retiring at the end of this term. And then you have the dude, <laughs> the dude. comes out and says, I'm going to be 82 years old with this election. I, I refuse to take a cognitive test because, uh, you know, that, that, oh, let me tell you about my friend. Oh, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm strong for the next four years. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Well played. <laughs> oh, yeah. We don't like the dude. And I'm I'm happy to say that we do not like the dude. Yeah, Let's I mean, see. In, in politics, though, it's, it's interesting to see. Like, oh, we got some people who don't like us. He's, he's a Trumper. So now we're, we're called a Trumper because we don't like the dude. Now, well, actually, no, I like Kennedy a lot. Unlikely Trumper in the world is Elon Musk. And even he looks like met with Trump in Florida over the weekend. And it looks like he's kind of don't um, courting some donors and, and chatting, but it's interesting because Elon Musk has, has been very, very, very progressive and been a lifelong Democrat. And you see people like, you know, a lot of these oh, kind of famous people, you know, rich, wealthy people really starting to change their attitude. It's, it's, we're seeing these pendulums starting to swing. It is pretty interesting. It's an interesting time in history. We'll all remember this time. You know, we'll all remember the pandemic. We'll all, we'll see books about that. Oh, did you, and did anyone? Um, uh, not trying to start a fight here, but did anyone notice how they're now saying that you treat COVID the same way you treat the flu? I'm just, just you know, a friend told me that today. Uh, anyone find that strange? Anyone find it strange that during the pandemic the flu was eradicated? It was gone. What? <laughs> and and now you treat COVID just like you treat the flu and kind of funny. Anyway, uh, let's see. Somebody just said, oh, what, a, what is this guy babbling about? So we got, uh, we got a hater in here. Kennedy was the, was the last great Democratic president. Uh, and so is RFK, but they don't, uh, yeah, they don't choose him. Uh, Justin Lee said, I like your YouTube channel. Been a long time follower. Thank you, Justin. Uh, am I just, can I just ask a, just a polling question here? Are we just babbling? 
I mean, if we are, that's great. That's we're allowed to. This is our show. <laughs> If we want to just babble and talk like the dude all day, blah, 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 and have nobody understand, we can do that because this is our show, not your show. So, but does anyone think that we're babbling? Because we might be. We might be. Are we babbling? Yeah. We're babbling fools, right? Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Yep. All right. Good. Yep. All right. Let's keep babbling. Let's keep babbling. We don't know anything. Yeah. We're just white supremacists, right? Yep. <laughs> Anybody. And, and that's a real story, folks. We, we had that on a prior WTF. Uh, we we're talking politics because we said we we're going to talk politics this year. We actually called it out. We warned everybody. So we gave you the warning. And uh, somebody said that anyone who votes Republican is a white supremacist. So we just owned that, I suppose. I mean, I'm certainly not a white supremacist, but I guess because I'm Republican, by definition, I am a white supremacist. That's how crazy shit has gotten. Uh, anyway. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, you have too many websites. I would like to do, actually I have one website. That's interesting. It's well, now we have a couple now. Yeah. Chris Noggle. And then we have be your own bank and be your own banker. That's just some people actually like to type in banker and some people just want to type in bank. So I figured own both and you know, you get both, but yeah, I guess maybe we have too many websites. <laughs> just a fan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do like cash doesn't just air out my balls. Would anyone mind if I aired my balls out for a moment? I just would. Ask you, Steve. Yeah, right. Dexter, not going to happen, buddy. Not going to happen. And I like, I like, I like the thought of that. It would actually probably be pretty comfortable to air my balls out like, like the cat's able to all the time. So anyway, let's get back so, to the news. Yeah. So we talk a lot about, you know, what's holding the economy up and you talk a lot about, you know, jobs have been strong. Um, let's maybe sit a little bit on that. We got some data coming out. All right, let's do it. Sure. Here, I'm gonna let you take it for a second. Give me one moment. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, pri uh, private payrolls rose by 140,000 in February, less than expected. ABD ADP reports. So, ADP usually comes out the report. I think about a week before uh, the official report comes out. Um, so, private companies had 140,000 uh, positions for the month, an increase from the upperly revised 111,000 in January, but a bit below uh, the 150. That was expected. Leisure and hospitality led with 41,000, construction 28,000, utilities 24,000. Um, the ADP report precedes the Labor Department's more closely watched uh, release, okay, which happens two days from now on Friday. Um, but it's always interesting to see when, when they come out with these official numbers because when we pull up what job openings, they always come out with an initial report and then they revise it once they get the actual data. And, you know, we can see how they've been trying to kind of prop these things up. If you look at six of the last eight months, um, they've been revising this downward. So they'll come out with a number and then a month or two later, they'll revise that um, and they'll revise it down. So you can see that's happened now six out of the last eight months. So just something to keep in note when they do release these uh, job numbers you know, it, it just know that it, it can definitely be revised down. So don't put too much faith into those. Yeah, this is funny. Yeah, it, it's interesting how they, they the numbers that they put out, you just you just can't believe those numbers, not at all. But one thing you certainly can believe is geopolitics right now, Stephen. Like I just saw this ship damaged offshore Yemen uh, days after Howdy struck vessel sank in the Red Sea. There's still Lots of crap going on out there. It's not been in the news as much, but like this was all talked about in that book. The end of the world is just the beginning, all about geopolitics, where in that book written years ago, they were talking about the Red Sea and shipping lanes being jeopardized by pirates. And, you know, it's it's actually all happening, which makes you kind of wonder, like, what happens when we no longer have global trade? Are we coming to a world where we don't have global trade? I got good news. If you live in the United States of America, you're in probably the promised land for that because we can self-sustain in the United States. And then it was covered in the book. Um, we still got the intercontinental traveler coming in with this stuff. He's, this is interesting. I'll, let's pull this one. Um, intercontinental traveler uh, said, uh, what's funny is someone's taking advice from you, like meaning taking advice from us. Um, is that bad? Like, because we're babbling messes and Stephen, so maybe people shouldn't take advice from us anymore, you know, because we just read off of the news and then we put our, our little spin on it. So because of that, people shouldn't take advice from us. Yeah. Right. It's great. We all got opinions, man. We all I mean, got opinions. Watch a, uh, 
watch any day you want. Just pull up a dude press conference with uh, with Miss uh, uh, John Prier, and you, you want to hear some lies and straight pure just disinformation and and spins that are just blow your mind. Just watch from the official presidential press conference they hold every day. It's it's mind boggling. So. Yeah. Uh, I think we, we should, like, Stephen. I think we should get some ice cream. What we talk about? We should go get some ice cream after this. Just saying. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jesus uh, works in the, uh, the the healthcare field, and he said that's misinformation regarding the the COVID being treated the same as the flu. So glad to hear that. I mean, it was in the news, so that's I was just pointing that out. It was in the news that uh, you know the, and I didn't read into it, so I probably got it wrong. So Jesus is probably right that it's misinformation, but. Well, Still, listen, I mean, uh, he came out, they, they ended the five day isolation, um, you know, that they recommend basically just if you're sick, stay home. I mean, it's the same as being sick with anything else or the flu. I mean, they, the flu is they just came out and said, Hey, we're, we're working on a new vaccine that combines the flu and COVID vaccines. Good luck with that. If you do it. Uh, they also just came out yesterday, the CDC director recommending everyone gets prepared this fall to take their 10th booster shot. So if you're on your 10th booster shot, just hey, good for you, man. I, I, I'm happy for you. Best of luck. That's all I'm going to say. I have no comment on that. <clears throat> yep. I'm going on my, uh, it worked the first nine I'm going on my first, uh, yeah. Booster shot Go for the 10th. Boom. We're good. Yeah. 10 minus 10 is, uh, yeah, that's the number that matters. Winter of death for us. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't even like talking about that anymore. It's like gone. It's in the past, still not totally gone. But, um, you know, people in healthcare, you know, they, they definitely have far better knowledge than us. Cotty said, bricks backed by gold and they're working on blockchain payments. Sounds like a great position. XRP. Yeah, XRP has been an interesting one. Um, you know, any of you that follow the cryptos, XRP was always a, uh, if you remember, XRP got banned for a while. And, um, but the, the use case of XRP is a, it's, it's one to watch for sure. So Cotty, I totally uh, agree. That would be one to really pay attention to. Yeah, catastrophic for the U.S. dollar. Well, the U.S. dollar is being destroyed from within. That's exactly what's happened to the U.S. dollar. But the U.S. dollar is still used in 60% of global trade. The BRICS and their efforts of overtaking the dollar are, are a long, 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 long way away from being able to do that. Um, contrary to popular belief, uh, where they keep talking about how much gold they're buying to back some future currency, the United States is also bulking up on gold. And the United States owns a lot of gold. Uh, our dollars just not backed by it, but you know, I think if they did that, I think our, who knows the feds number one job is to protect the dollar. Who knows what length they'll go to for that. I would say world war three would be a likely place. They would take it. I hate to say that. I hate to say that. And that is not in the news. Uh, let's see. Um, I had something else here that was pretty interesting and now I lost it. Well, that's gone. Mortgage demand surges 11% as more homes hit the spring market. Wait, Stephen, last week, what, what weren't, wasn't mortgage demand like falling and now it's surging, falling, <laughs> surging, falling, surging, kind of interesting. I, I bet you Yahoo probably says that mortgage demand is falling at, at, at catastrophic levels. When this report here says weekly mortgage demand surges 11% as homes hit the spring market. I right about that. Oh my gosh. Do you like, I just read, a, I, I didn't bring it here. I got an, another economic report that talked about like some of the hotter markets in the U S like Salt Lake city, San Francisco, San Jose, San Diego, a lot, a lot of California places, but a lot of others where to buy a house, you have to make over $150,000 just to qualify for a mortgage. Like for, for the, the median home price in those areas, you need to make 150 grand just to qualify, like just to get in the running for it. So I don't know what's going to happen to home prices. I will, I will tell you home prices will come down in the future. I don't know when, but they will, they have to supply and demand, baby supply and demand. When people start losing their jobs, when the economy slows, when we get closer and closer to a recession, absolutely positively supply and demand metrics will kick in and housing price will fall. Contrary to what everybody says, Oh, there's so much demand. doesn't matter. doesn't matter when someone loses their job, they are not getting a mortgage. And when they can't, when a lot of people lose jobs, when unemployment ticks up, which it will, that, that's when the whole thing is going to shit will hit the fan. Let's see. What else? You got anything else? I'm running out of stuff here. We only got three minutes left. Um, 
I had a bunch of, I mean, in the week, during the week, we, I send like stuff to Steven all the time, um, you know, just for other things that I see in the news throughout the week. Cause we were just looking at today's news. Um, Oh, uh, Elon Musk says he's not donating money to Trump or the dude. Okay. Breaking news. In case any of you cared, just, just saying. What was what were some of those things that I had messaged? Message. Yeah, you? but there's other ways to uh, to get involved and uh, just yeah. make giving donations. You know, he's not going to fly to Florida and meet with the guy for no reason. So it's that's business at the highest level, right there, man. Oh, very very important. Oh my gosh, Stephen, I almost forgot this. So any of you a couple weeks ago that signed up for Kramer's like his investment club, I, I can't remember how much it was, but they had a big sale. And I know a bunch of you are huge Kramer fan, fans. So you jumped in on that. Kramer just said for investing club members, in other words, if you're paying, uh, watch Kramer's morning meeting live. I'm sure he's got some great stock picks that you're sure to lose money on. So if any of you are looking for a good tax write-off for the year, I mean, jump on in. I mean, you're, you're, you're really, really probably about a 99% chance of losing money. So, hey, if any of you are looking for tax deductions, Jim Cramer, get in that investing club. And we uh, we were not paid for that endorsement. <laughs> we are not paid for any endorsements. This show does not take any money from anyone. It just, uh, yeah, it just exists. And all of you show up and some of you hate us. Some of you like us. Some of you don't even know what to think of us. Yeah, the... um some some of the things that we send back and forth and I see throughout the week are it just takes you down different rabbit holes. I don't I don't feel like getting into right now is the bottom line. Hey Steven, Kevin uh Dixon in the bottom, he's he's a PMC guy. I think I had sent you that over. He he's on P, he's on PMC. He's trying to find good lenders um yeah. on there. I guess maybe he's he's getting some people that don't seem like they're good lenders on there. Could you maybe just uh you know connect with him on PMC and just maybe bring him on Money Club Monday as a as a uh let's see, yeah, as a borrower. I don't know. I mean, maybe just see if we can't uh figure out what's yeah. going on. Yeah, there. we were emailing about uh, uh yeah, we'll I'll work with you, Kevin, for sure. Cool. Oh, oh, this just in internet intercontinental traveler or intercontinent traveler said, uh, I even look clueless. So hang on, let me uh, play the part a little bit better. <clears throat> that better. I look more clueless now, Steven. Is that that look <laughs> you're going for? I like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll never, ever be able to mimic how clueless the dude looks, but I mean, I, I can try. Yes. No. All right. Well. Gave it my best shot. Sorry, intercontinental traveler. Maybe you should, uh, you know, port yourself to another continent through your time traveling, uh, whatever the hell you are. Uh, I, I will say, Chris, you know, we, we do like to get people involved in the show. Obviously, we're reading comments and having fun. And so if you guys do see like articles or crazy stories throughout the week, uh, shoot them over. Snaggy Snaggy at chrisnoggle.com or whatever email you can send to us. It'll get to me. And uh, we'll put it on the show. We'll talk about it. We'll, you know, we'll say who sent it and we'll have some fun with it. So send those over every week. Absolutely. All right. And then uh, just in closing, check us out this afternoon at 1 p.m. Uh, Intercontinental, you are not invited. So uh, exclude yourself because you cannot come uh, because you said I'm clueless and because you don't even know what you're talking about. But anyway, join us one o'clock this afternoon, one Eastern at uh, just go to chrisnoggle.com. You can register there. We give you three free books, totally free books, uh, Intercontinental Traveler. You can't have my books either. Uh, and you can join us. We're going to have a really good training just following up after the three day, which was pretty epic. Um, and with that being said, uh, I don't know, Stephen, I don't really have anything else, but I think everybody on here, if you really kind of just want to see uh, pure chaos, Google San Francisco streets. <laughs> and uh, you want to see what uh, good politicking is and uh, how the policies in California by our boy Newsom, uh, how those are really leading to drug problems, massive drug problems. You want to destroy a, a state? You want to destroy a city? Well, there's the blueprint. We finally now have a set blueprint of how you can destroy a beautiful city. But just uh, look up the photos of San Francisco and I say no more. Stephen, you want to close this out? Yeah, I mean, on that, you know, where we've seen these pendulums, so it's going to be hitting, it's going to be swinging back and hitting San Francisco soon. We just saw it in Portland, Oregon, 
where they reinstated uh, drug laws. So it's now a misdemeanor up to six months in jail, I believe, uh, for certain amounts of uh, some of the hard drugs. So, you know, Portland, Oregon was the kind of poster child of free drug use and everything for the past several years. And mm -hmm. it's gotten to the point where it's unmanageable. So they're giving uh, police kind of some some rights back to start making some you know, arrests and, and getting things back under control. So I think we'll see that starting to sway the other way. I think we'll see it starting with um, uh, Make America Great Again Again campaign this year going into the elections. And I think we'll start to see that stuff happen and, and kind of get some of this under control. But that's not even what worries me as much as the spending. It just seems like both parties, the spending's out of control. I mean, we're doing an extra trillion dollars in national debt on average every 100 days right now. Um, the spending's out of control. So the next thing I think we really need to start looking at is forget all these social and and, 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 and stuff like that in politics. Let's talk about spending and how the Social Security Administration is just Oh, at $150 trillion in unfunded liability over the next 20 years. I mean, these are big problems that nobody's talking about. So these are things that, that I think we need to face. That's it, man. It's been a good show. Totally agree. Totally agree. So folks, we all have to do our part. We have to go out there, kick some ass, take some names. And just remember, it's all about the worthy idea and you chasing your dream. We'll see you this afternoon at 1 p.m. Eastern. All except the intercontinental traveler is not invited. Till next time.